Rip, rip, rip it up. What's up, people? Welcome back to Crash Flow. And uh, today we got an episode called Each One Teach One. And we're going to meet up with a good friend of mine, legendary graffiti writer, Kuhn Lei, aka Irshnan. And uh, he's one of the first guys I saw up all over the city when I first came in the 90s and the early 2000s. He was a part of an infamous crew called Iraq. Now he's doing collaborations with Supreme and Comme des Garçons and really progressing in his art. So I want to check up with him. You. What up, bro? Yeah, Squad. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you meeting up like this. Yeah, of course. All right, man. So let's get straight into it. Because I want a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people don't know that you are an OG skater. I don't know. I think maybe before the graffiti or before you write it, I don't really know the, the whole story, but I wanted to talk about that. And like, what did you find first with skating or graffiti? And like, how did that go? Um, you know, it was so long ago now that you asked, right? That it, it seems like they were like literally at the same time. And I think it, it doesn't, it's so close that it doesn't really matter. But technically, it was graffiti first, oh. right? But then I think literally a few months later, it was skateboarding. Um, and at the time, it was like a lifetime. You know, when you're younger, like a day is like a week or whatever. So yeah. like a few months is like, I'm a different person now. Um, but yeah, I, I was meaning that I was so bad at graffiti and so it just kind of like in the like infancy stage of like it just being like this thing I'm really into but not a part of yeah. yet. I'm not a part of it, I'm just like um, a voyeur, you know, just kind of like um, that when I got into skating, at the, uh, you know, a few months later, I was like the same, you know, it was like they were both these new things that were like, oh my God, skateboarding so awesome, it's so dope, look at all these things that people do, it's like a whole world, like, looking at skateboarding mags and um, yeah. the public library, like after school, which is how I found out about skateboarding. Um, like Trans World, uh, Skateboard Mag, Slap. Um, these are the magazines I saw in the public library on like, I guess it was like what, like 79th Street off of Lex, there's a library up there. And um, I would I would take, the, they had like little paper Lizzie's in the magazine so that you couldn't steal them from the library. And I would just like, you know, rip that out, take the mag. Cause it's like, it was like a, you know, when you're like that young and you see stuff that you've never seen before and you're like, people are doing these things like I, that I don't even understand that are awesome, that aren't black. Um, but you just are overwhelmed with emotion and inspiration. It's like, I need this Bible. I need to have it with me. It's a, I, I need this. Like, How old are you then? 13. 13, yeah, yeah. All right. Like, so you were skating. And then you started writing, and then so when did you just start to say, you know what, I want to just do graffiti mainly, like that's really what I'm starting to really fall in love with. Oh, I, there was never a decision. Um, so I was writing graffiti very poorly and skateboarding very poorly. Um, and I guess, so I was hiding both from my parents, right? They didn't know about either. Um, so I would like, steal skateboards from Woolworth and like hide them in the neighborhood like behind garbage cans or like under things like you know down the like basement level apartment like just like you know and stash them when I came home from school and then get them before I went to school the next day so um, you know I lost a lot of skateboards like that but they were from Woolworth so you know but um uh, so I, I was hiding both with my parents uh, so I wasn't able to be really good at skateboarding because I wasn't like doing it like for like several hours after school it was like skateboarding to school I'm in school skateboarding at lunchtime and skateboarding home and that's it um, but like looking at skateboarding magazines going to blades stealing things from blades like just being in blades watching skate videos in blades like the only place I could see skateboarding yeah. action live right because no one in my school skateboarded in my high school um, everyone called me Tony Hawk and yelled the word 360 flip at me. Yeah, I got like that. You do Tony a, Hawk. Do a 360 flip yeah, Tony yeah. Hawk, right? So he's Tony Hawk, do a kickflip. Yes. So, um, and I can imagine here in New York too, like, a lot oh, of yeah. kids be straight up in your face. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I mean, it was like crazy. Um, but whatever, you know, I, I, I like the attention, but I sucked for so long at both. And I think at, at one point I ran away from home 
All right, because that close story, that chapter needed yeah, to Yeah, I think I end. heard about that a little bit. Right, I needed to bounce, and so I made a decision to leave. I had just seen the movie Kids, actually, on HBO it's the night before. <laughs> and I was like, this is what people are doing? Like, I'd seen ravers, like, on the streets, right? I knew about, like, on alternative high schools, and, like, kids were just, like, you know, kind of more hippie style. But none of those people went to my school, right? And um, so I didn't, and I never, like, hung out after school, so I didn't know what the scene was, right? But I knew that there was a scene. And I saw the movie Kids and I was just like, yo, like, there are people skateboarding, hanging out, doing all the things that I, I was imagining in my head, right? Um, or fantasizing about, like, wishing that it was a reality. I was like, it is a reality, confirmed, look. And uh, so I was like, I gotta go, I'm sorry. Like, my parents are yelling at me over, like, clanging dishes while I'm, like, like as I'm washing dishes, like, I'm banging the dishes too loud. And they're about to like rip my head up like i'm just gonna leave and then you won't have to yell at me for the dishes and i can go skateboard and everybody wins um i wanted to ask you another thing too i thought it was interesting like i feel like skating skateboarding and graffiti writers are similar in a lot of ways like i, I never wrote but i was always really interested and i feel like you know maybe you get that same feeling from landing a skate trick like a scary skate trick like jumping down some stairs as like running up a building in the middle of the night and catching the tag in a crazy place and it's that adrenaline rush so i would think there's similarities there but i don't know you you've done both and i wasn't i wasn't really a writer i was always interested in it and i, and I loved seeing it around the city but like do you do you think there's a lot of similarities and if not then you know oh no yeah you're kind of bugging there's like literally no similarities at all <laughs> um and no one who ever skateboard tries graffiti, I'm like the only one. Yeah. No, there were there were so many similarities, it was insane, right? And so like I, I literally wanted all of my skateboard friends to write graffiti because I'm like, you're like the same people. Like you're cool and I like know you already, so just be good at graffiti and then we can like do both, right? Yeah. And um, but then I so in the beginning when I started hanging out at Union Square when I met like Akira and Anthony and um, you know, we were going to friction and like you know matt um abaddon like everybody who hung out like at union square like um i got, i only knew people who skateboarded and um like the, the people i knew who wrote graffiti like i would just meet in passing like i knew i knew my boy guess who from high school he put me on to graffiti yeah. Oh no, guess. That's oh, guess. Okay. There's another dude who writes Guess Who now. That, okay. But he's the guy who got me into graffiti in high school. Um, and so, like back then, graffiti writers and skateboarders were not the same dude, right? Um, they just weren't somehow. Um, but there were people doing both, oh, right? Okay. I just didn't know them, so it it wasn't like a whole big scene of like you know, um, like now it's like you do music, you do photography. You have YouTube, you, you do like Instagram, you do clothing, like everyone does a little bit of everything. Back then it was just like, if you write graffiti, you have razor blades in your mouth and you wear camouflage every day and you like try to rob people for shit. And if you skateboard, you just smoke weed and you wear Jinkos and like, Jinkos, wow. you, know, you, know, you, know, you, you yeah. know what I mean? It was like very like separate. It wasn't like this homogenous thing. Um, but I like it was the same. Like I was like, yo, but they're 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 the same. It's like it's like this. It, just how it like it seems perfect now. It just like yeah, like obviously like they all eventually came together because it, it, they they just needed, I guess, the internet or something. Yeah. So like, well, yeah, I have a lot of friends that skate and write, but I just something that I didn't go all all the way into. And I've done other artwork and stuff, but not specifically writing. But I always saw my friends almost like getting off on it. So I thought that was like relatable. Well, back in the day, it was like, you know, we would get chased by the Parks Department out of Battery Park City. They would try to like trip us with the Bretons and stuff and like try to like, you know, um, actually beat us up. They were like a gang, right? And um, like the same thing with graffiti, like people would like try and chase you and beat you up or whatever. You'd have to fight. It, it, to me, it just seemed like it was. It would be, they were both like really fuck the system, fuck the world. Like you don't understand me. You don't understand this thing I'm into. Yeah. Like you're not gonna get it. Most people aren't gonna get it. Like even people who are like my age, right? Like they want to wear polo. They don't like want to like skateboard and fuck up their clothes um, yeah. or write graffiti and fuck up their clothes. You know what I mean? It's just like nobody. It was such a small group of people that were in the boat. Yeah. But 
to me, it just seemed like they were just like perfect mirrors of each other. One was athletic, one was more artistic. Yeah, true, true. So yeah, I want the other thing I want to talk about is, you know, we try to give kids advice whether it's skateboarding, or whatever. So, what is it? So if I'm a kid coming from Ohio, or coming from out of state, and I want to move to New York, and I want to write, and I want to jump out a building and tag, or or I just want to get into art and stuff. What do you suggest? Or I mean, obviously mainly about graffiti, but what what, what can a kid do if they they want to get into it, they want to move into New York or they want to start writing. Wow, that's a lot to unpack. <laughs> um, I'm so far removed from that person that like needed to run away and like be living like on, um, my idea was but that- you I was, used to be that. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I, I, I'm gonna have to channel now. I, <laughs> my idea was when I ran away, it was like, I'm gonna like, cause I was already shoplifting like for, for like a long time. So I was like, oh, I'm good. I can like get my own food and clothes and that's all I need. And I'll just sleep on the rooftops of New York City because it was like springtime. I didn't wasn't thinking that there was this thing called winter that comes. And I was like, yo, like I'll just sleep on rooftops. Like it'll be sweet. And like it was just like this next two weeks was all I was thinking about. Um, so there's a lot for you if you're thinking of moving to New York. You want to write graffiti or skateboard or do both. And you want to come here to do that. Uh, I would say, please come through, right? We need you. This is this is a great place for that. There's like no other place where you're going to be able to like actually skateboard around and write graffiti at the same time um, uh, in America, basically. I mean, there might be, but they're whack. Uh, <laughs> and um, it's definitely not going to be what you expect. And I'm also speaking from a time when um, like there was no internet, right? Like I I didn't know anything like no one knew each other though you had to meet people um in person and then if you didn't like know them well enough to get their number you might not ever see them again there was that feeling it wasn't like this like oh give me your instagram you total stranger and i'll see you online later or hi i'm meeting you for the first time in person but i've known you for three years on the internet right like there wasn't that it was just like this like real kind of like juiciness from like meeting people uh, like, oh wow, that guy's a complete fucking asshole. Like, oh, like I, I heard about him and he's great. I love his artwork or he, he's a real sick skater, but he's a fucking dick, right? It, uh, that happened a lot. Um, so I would just say, just come here. There's a lot to feel out. You have to like, um, there's a lot of similarities between back then and now. Like you definitely will need to um, contextualize stuff, right? It's like, you'll, you'll have to be here in person. Um, if, if you want to write graffiti, obviously you need to like get familiar with landscape. You need to get familiar with uh, your adversaries and your allies. Um, it's it's basically community based, right? Like yes, you can do these things on your own, which is another similar thing between skateboarding and graffiti. You can just there's no coach and there's no team, uh, but there can be. But you don't need that to start out, right? Um, and so, um, but I would say come here and utilize the community. You know what I mean? There's there's definitely people here who have been in your position before that uh, can relate to you. Use that, right? You don't have to do anything on your own. It's way harder on your own. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, people can be scary and that's kind of a hurdle that you kind of need to get over, right? Like, if you, and if you're coming to New York, if you've decided that you're coming to New York, that's a huge hurdle. Most people never make that decision to actually leave where they're from and come to like a place that, you know what I mean? Most people don't have that in them. So if you have that in you, like, yes, come through. Like we need that like kind of spirit, right? Like immigrants who come to America from other countries, that's like cream of the crop. Like people who are like, I'm going, like, yes, come. Like we need that energy, right? Those people, um, that's what makes New York, New York. Even though I'm born and raised here, I recognize um, not everyone who's born and raised here um, has that energy, right? Only some people, just like the people who come here. So we need you as much as uh, you feel drawn to this place and, you know, become a part of the community. It won't all be uh, sunshine and lollipops. Um, but that's kind of why you want to come. That's what makes it exciting, right? Otherwise, it would just be like, you know, pink cloud. And it's like, there is danger, um, you know, you're gonna be afraid, you're gonna be angry, you're gonna be hurt, but it's kind of all worth it in the end, you know? It depends on how you play your cards. Um, I would just say, be yourself. I know people say that all the time, but like, there's a reason why people say that shit. Because 
it's so much easier to just try to like fit in and like not be seen and just kind of do what other people are doing and be happy with that. And maybe that's the way you'll find yourself, right? Because we all kind of do that. We fall into that trap of like just doing what our friends are doing or people who we look up to, but just to try to like get their attention or be down uh, and not be called a weirdo and stick out. But like after doing that, I realized that like the weird part of me, what were the best parts? Right. And before it was cool. It was like, oh, no, like I like the things that make me different from you. I don't I'm not going to try to hide them for you. If there are people who want you to hide the weird parts about yourself, they don't care about you and they're not your friend. Right. Even though you might like their style and everything they have to say and do and the way they smoke cigarettes, it's like they're not your friend. If they don't like you for you and you're like weird package, like they're, they're dragging you down. Like, get them out of there. You know what I mean? And it's hard. So make that mistake. Hang out with the wrong people for a while. Get to know why that's a, that's a bad decision. Don't just take my word for it. Do it. You know what I mean? Um, don't just listen to someone um, that has been there like for year after year after year. There's blood suckers in New York. I'll tell you that much. They'll suck the blood out of you. Bro. There's like everything in New York. Yeah, wherever, that's true. There's everything. Here. Whatever you're leaving to come to New York for, we have here too. Like don't, like it's not... It's not all creative people shaking hands and stuff. Like people will definitely try and like stab you in the back, but it's it it, it like builds character. Um, the community is uh, it, it helps you flourish as a person. It makes you better. Being around people that um, inspire you, that are better than you, that are worse than you, that make mistakes for you, you know, that you can learn from. It's all happening here at such a high rate that it's really good. Okay. Thank you, man. I think I think they said plenty, man. I was sick. I appreciate it. Of course. Thanks for course, breaking it down time. for the kids. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bless them. <laughs> <laughs>